Hey YouTube. So, got a pile of logs that were delivered to my house for free. And now we get to figure out what we're gonna do with them. 60 of them. Good straight, clean logs. Mostly pine. Got some poplar and some oak in there. Before I bought my sawmill a while ago, I was wondering myself, what the heck is it really like to run one of these sawmills? So, I thought today, why don't we make a video detailing the process from start to finish. Got my tractor crammed in here with my sawmill. I'm eventually wanting to move my sawmill, even though it's on the trailer. I've got the overhang over there where the wood's drying. If I had to do it over, I would have opened this back gate and made this little stall area for drying because I don't have any animals here at the moment. But dragging the saw in and out of my barn and setting it up just right out here and doing that with my tractor and then I get to milling. So how about I walk you through step by step what does it take to go from a round log to milled lumber and how hard is it? Spoiler alert, it's ridiculously easy. The Woodland Mills sawmill is amazing and these band saws make this work phenomenally straightforward, very easy, extremely user friendly. So if you're thinking of getting a sawmill, highly recommend it. Super fun, very creative way to uh, build stuff. And so far I'm loving it. But anyway, let's go uh, start to finish. First step, we gotta get our sawmill set up outside the barn here. So let's, let's hook it up and take it out. got the tractor set up out here and now I've got my six foot level and what we need to make sure is that it's level front to back and left to right so that when we put logs on it they're laying flat and then when I move in the saw head back and forth if it's not level front to back when I'm done it's going to start to slide one way or the other and get in the way so you want to get good and level so to do that we've got Two sets of jack stands here, here, and here. So we've got six that we can adjust this whole setup, get this perfectly level all the way around. So let's go ahead and knock that out. We got it level, front to back, left to right. Using these six jack stands all the way across. So now we're ready to put some logs on. To transport this thing, there's four pins that go in. One here, one here, and then two in the back. <clears throat> but since I'm just moving it in and out of my barn, I just put one pin in, one pin only. And now this saw head's free to move. So, what we're going to do now to get it ready to drop some logs on here, we've got two log stops that are set. We've got the short ones and we got the long ones. When I'm putting the fresh logs on here, 
we're gonna drop the long log stops in and get it set up to where we can come in and put this log in here have it rest up against these stops here on the rails and then we've got these clamps these clamps can move back and forth and if you see here i push this down and it tightens it so basically i set these other way i get the log set up push it up against the bat the log stops here and then i get these dog clamps and i clamp it tight but for now i'm just going to set these down kind of clamp them horizontally so they don't get in the way when i'm putting my logs up so now we are basically ready to throw a log on there some of y'all may ask what is this bucket for all the sawdust comes out of here and i catch it in this bucket so it doesn't just end up with a giant pile of sawdust so all right let's get a log and throw it on We got our log on the deck. I've done this one backwards. Usually I put the butt in closest to the saw head at the beginning, but this one loaded up backwards. Um, it's got a pretty significant differential in the butt end, and I've got a cut list that I'm making for my pavilion. So I'm gonna turn this into a four by nine uh rafter if you will kind of timber frame rafter for my pavilion so right now i've got it on the deck what i need to do is pull it up against the log stops i'm actually going to move this one one over and pull it tight and then dog clamp it in got our log on the deck it's clamped in place it's ready to go again usually i have the butt end of the log closest here to the saw head but this one got loaded the opposite direction uh, i think the main concern really is this depth between here and this blade you have to make sure you have enough clearance and if you start at the narrow end and then you work up and you miscalculate you may need to back up so just gonna double check that so your first step is gonna be tightening the tension on the blade and that is this thing right here so basically you come in spin it with just two fingers till it's as tight as you can get it and then you're gonna go two and a half to three turns so half turn one half turn two half turn two and a half all right, got the blade tension, checked the sight gauge here for my lubrication tube that comes down. It actually comes out through this fitting, lubricates the blade. Got the log on deck. Uh, I've already checked the oil and gas. So now what I need to do is come in here and raise up the blade to just do the first pass. So to do that, you basically Crank this up, and it cranks up here. Come up here, and sight my first pass, which I think I can get away with a pretty narrow one since i am got the butt end at the other end. All right, so basically, I've got this all set up to where we are ready to fire it up and crank it up. First, uh, first crank of the day. All right, we double check. My log stops are lower than my cut. Everything's good and stable. We're ready to go.
against our log stops here. And now we're just gonna come in and cut the top off as well, just like we did the one side. All right, so if I cut it right here, I'm gonna lose all this lumber. I've got a scale right here, and I know I need some two by material. So I'm gonna raise this got two sides square and my timber rafters for my pavilion I'm doing four by eight and a half so I've got 10 almost 11 to the bark <clears throat> so Now we are ready. Come in. Cut this. So now we've got three of the sides we're going to cut a little bit off the top and then I think I can get another two by out of it. So we're just going to rip a little bit and then come in and get the rest of it. Got my four by eight and a half rafter. This one's gonna be pretty nice. It's got some really pretty, pretty knots on it. I know that weakens the structural integrity, but at this size and the span, not too worried about it. And then I also got that 
two by eight and i got these two buys that i'm gonna rip the live, live edge off and so we got four basically two by eights and then a four by eight and a half pretty darn cool so that's all there is to it really to creating lumber on your woodland mills you know there's a lot to it there's a lot of measuring cutting rotating the logs around getting it set up and then once i get it set up over here in the overhang uh we've got lumber stacked right now i'm not gonna have to set it up every day but for right now i'm just moving it in and out in hindsight's 2020 i wish i had just gone ahead and parked it in there uh, but once i get my fence boards out i'm gonna go ahead and start stacking lumber back in here now and then once i get my fence boards out for my fence project then i'm gonna move this permanently over but this is my little tool shelf where i can drop tools down stays out of the way all right well thanks for watching youtube hope you enjoyed it i hope this was encouraging it's super satisfying to me to come in here and take a, a round log and create lumber like this it's gonna be really neat to build my pavilion and go down and enjoy that next to the creek and know that i milled all the lumber so you know the main purpose of this video is just to tell you if you're thinking about getting a portable sawmill i think this is almost like the golden age of portable sawmills there's so many out there on the market so many good deals and great prices and high quality equipment that i just if you're thinking about it go do it it's super fun and I got a lot of logs to go play with now. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.